Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I always spell my first name at the beginning of my video because I do spell it unusually. I spell it with two L's and one N, and there are a lot of Lynn's out here. Um, today we're going to do um, some basic pen and ink work. I do a comic book called Silk and Steel, and you can find it at Patreon, silkandsteel.com. Uh, or just patreon.com, sorry, it's patreon.com uh, silk and steel or forward slash. I, I'll put it in the information below so you can find it. Um, but uh, I've been a uh, storyboard artist for animation for over 30 years. And I'm finally getting around to doing the comic that I've always wanted to do. So I'm doing this in traditional inking um, for the initial black line art. And then I am scanning it into the computer and doing the color digitally. Now, um, the tools that we're going to use today, I can't turn it quite because my I, I, this is um, D letter black number four is the ink that I'm currently using. Um, it's very dark. It's waterproof. It's it's a it's a good ink for this purpose. You can get it online on Amazon and some art st stores. It is a Japanese ink. Um, I'm a bit. I used to use Black Magic Higgins, and they changed the formula over the past few years, and I don't like it as much anymore. And I haven't found an American ink that I'm happy with as of yet. Um, the pen to, pen I'm using this is a Crowquill holder and pen. It's a Crowquill um, 102 nib. I get most of my uh, art supplies from Dick Blick. I'm not advertising for them per se. It's just it's one of those places where I know I can get the materials, I can get them at a good price, and um, it's online, so I don't have to worry if you can support your local art supply store if you have one. They will usually have that materials. This is a kneaded eraser, um, my favorite kind of eraser. It's um, basically, it works like bread dough used to work. They used to use bread dough in the Renaissance and what have you. Now we have, this is basically... Uh, rubber with air whipped into it and it is a delightful eraser that works well for me. Um, this is a um, knife blade that you put in a basic utility knife. That's for mistakes. As I'm going to show you first thing on how to fix your mistakes uh, without using whiteout because I like I really like my pieces to be clean, and I find that, that uh, various whiteouts make the final work clumpy, and it's just me. Um, if you like using uh, a, a white gouache or whiteout for your mistakes, that's fine, but I'll show you how to fix mistakes with one of these first things off. And this is a chunk of latex eraser. I'll cut it. Um, usually you buy um, your standard latex eraser in a big chunk it's, it's usually too big for my purposes, so I'll cut a piece off, and then it ends up looking like this after a while. Oh, my cat got a hold of it. That That's a possibility, too. But um, we're going to show you where I'm starting from. This is a drawing of my character, Malcolm Steele. Um, I've done a model sheet of him. I'm going to show you here. This is this is a model sheet. Um, let me see if I can back, back out uh, my camera. That's for zooming in and out. Okay, there we go. Um, this is a model sheet. I drew all these heads. I did the turnarounds and what have you of Malcolm first in pencil. And I, you know, threw them into the computer and rearranged and made my own model sheet. And this is so if you're doing a comic book, it's nice to have um, various views of your character um, so that you can make sure that you draw your character on model. I've been working in animation, like I said, for 30 odd years and um, you always work for model sheets so that you make sure that everybody draws the character in the same way. And if you're working on your proportions and making sure that everything's drawn the same way every time, the character then looks the same throughout the storyline. So um, if you are making a comic book, I would highly recommend you make your own model sheets. I don't have them for all my characters, but what I'll do is I'll go back through, I'll pull up old comic pages that I've done for some of the, the incidental characters. And that way I'm, I'm always looking at something to make sure that I'm drawing the character, what's called on model. So anyways, okay, I, I've got a new camera and uh, the zooming in and zooming out 
is a little bit tricky, so I just turned it off and on so you could see it again. Okay, so this is the, the rough. Um, I've done, um, basically, uh, I've set up the rough on a preliminary sheet of um, 8.5 by 11. Basically, it's, this is a, a kind of animation paper from Footloose. Um, this is their own animation paper. I have used some of it sometimes. It's a, a little bit translucent, and I like that so that I can use a light box for my transferring. Um, so I've done this. You can tell it's a very rough drawing of my good old boy Malcolm here. So you can see there. And I'll, I'll keep the model sheet. And like I said, I've got all these different um, variations of uh, which direction his head is facing and him with his hat on and his hat off. Because he usually has his hat on. His hat's a signature look for him. But I'll have him with his hat on and off, depending on where we are in the storyline and what he's doing. So I want both those versions. And so here's, this is the rough pencil. And I'm going to turn. And I've attached it. Uh, sorry, hit my camera. Uh, I've attached it to the back of a sheet of 400 Strathmore Bristol. And you can see I've started doing the inking on him. Um, so the, the drawing that you saw on the back, what I'm doing is, I'm going to turn on my light box here. This is an autograph light box. You can see it's it's really, really bright so that you can see, I don't know if it's showing up in the video enough, but it'll show the, the drawing that I have on my rough, which is behind the Bristol, onto here. And then I will draw again, you can see the pencil lines, I've got pencil lines here, on the Bristol. Um, and then I'll draw the ink over the pencil lines. And usually what I'll do is, this is, I uh, said before, this is a kneaded eraser. Um, I will ghost back lines so that they're very light a lot of times before I draw on them. And that way... Um, it's easier to erase the lines afterwards, but you can draw straight on top of the pencil without a problem. Okay, what I wanna show right now, as you can see, I accidentally, um, while I was opening my, my jar of ink the other day, I got a, f a fingerprint into the ink. If you're using pen and ink, it's gonna be messy. You will spill your ink. Um, you will spill your ink on your paper. You will do a blop of ink because um, dip pens will occasionally, you'll load up your dip pen with too much ink and a blop will fall on the paper. And then you're going, oh my God, I've drawn an hour on that drawing and I can't fix it. I'm going to show you how to fix things first. This, like I said, it's a utility knife blade. Just hold the flat of the blade to the paper and move it back and forth, flat to the paper. And basically what you're doing, think of it like you're sanding down to the next layer of paper. And with good Bristol, like I said, this is 400 Strat cotton acid-free paper. You can see it just scrapes away. You just have to be really, really careful and just keep the uh, blade as parallel to that surface as you can. Now, if you say you've got other ink lines around it, you know, go up on the tip a little more. It takes a little practice. You may not be, what you might want to do is do some lines and play with practicing how to do this on um, a piece of paper before you make a mistake. Now, while we're while I'm drawing, um, I'll, I'll actually, I'll probably make a mistake or something, and I'll show you how to do, fix this within the drawing. But I wanted to show you firsthand. Then you take your kneaded eraser, and you take most of the dust and bring it back with the kneaded eraser. Then you take your latex eraser, rub it with the latex eraser, now scrape, brush the dust away, and then go back in with your kneaded eraser until when you, you, if you put your finger over that, you can feel a little bit of the paper, but for the most part, that smoothed back enough, and especially if you go over the, 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 it again with the kneaded eraser, what that does is it burnishes the fibers down. So any little fibers that you have sticking up that might be um, might attract ink in will be gone away. So your kneaded eraser is really good for that. So it's like kneaded eraser, latex eraser, kneaded eraser. And there it is. There's no mark there anymore. Okay, so 
Now we're going to go into some actual inking. And inking style is, um, it's very personal and you, um, I will probably do a video that shows different ways that you can cross hatch and stipple in order to get um, an area looking darker or lighter or with more detail or less detail. My particular style is a bit on the haphazard side, side but it's, um, it's still fun uh, and it works real well for me. And like I said, I will have um, Silk's image off screen while I'm doing this so that I will look at him occasionally and go, okay, I've got most of the, the important features, his important features set up. Okay, now with the ink, what I'll do is you dip the ink in to about, let's see if I can show it on the camera, about um, here. I try not to dip the, the entire portion of it. Just try to dip the forward part. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll take it and often scrape the tip across the top. And what that does is in the well, this, the area, the, the empty area behind the pen is called the well. That's where the ink will lay. And there'll be just like a little drop of it. So I'll put it in there, take a little drop away. And we're going to start with his collar here. And I'm not great about doing a straight line. So I have a tendency to link my lines together. And you'll notice I'm pulling the pen towards me. It's, it's like you'll go from back to front. If you pull the pen away or towards you is the best way to do it. Um, so, and then here I'm drawing it away. It's better to draw toward you than away. I can't say that I don't do both. And this is the tie around his neck. He's got a uh, um, kind of a cravat style tie that just it's a fold over. And then he's got a gold pin that keeps it in place. So you can see I'm linking my lines together. And I, I, you can tell I'm not being very careful. Um, my lines are a little bit, um, have a bit of character to them. So say I'm not trying to be do every line perfect. Every line, I flow one line into the next. Now the one thing you got to do on a regular basis, it's like after about, oh, 10 or 15 strokes, you'll run out of ink. So then you dip your pen into your container again. I'm doing the curls of his hair. And I, when I'm inking a drawing, I will go all over the drawing. I won't stick to one particular area. I'll, I'll jump from here to there. And also there's a combination of reasons why you need to do that. Your ink is dries pretty fast, but it's not like, um, if oh, another way you can do this, say you could do this particular type of drawing with, um, say, Sakura Pigma pens are really, really nice. Um, I used to use a Rapidograph pen for my inking work. Um, their Koenor and Mars Statler make nice um, um, Rapidograph pens. And I used to do tons of inking work with just Rapidograph pens. And the nice thing about Rapidograph pens is that the ink that you can use in those is very similar to the ink I'm using right now. I used to get the ink that was designed for marking on vinyl because Rapidographs were originally made for drafting um, before we had computers that did drafting. So they needed a, a consistent line weight. And so um, I found that, that they worked very nice for me because I didn't have to constantly be um, dipping my pen into the ink and replenishing the ink and the, the line was a very consistent weight. So, um, when I first started in, um, as a professional artist, I was primarily an illustrator for, um, workbooks and textbooks and, uh, various things like that. And I did a lot of black and light wor work because they were using, okay, nobody in the audience are going to know this mimeograph before Xerox. And then they went to Xerox, but they would have a lot of um, black and white worksheets for kids. 
So kids needed, you know, they found that, hey, kids are more interested in doing work when there's a fun picture on them. And so I would uh, do a lot of work for that particular audience and clientele. And the thing was, is that they don't pay well. They pay very poorly. So I was working my brains out and I was fortunate enough to live in Los Angeles and fortunate enough to get into uh, animation when there was a uh, big boom in animation. Again, they kind of shut down animation for a while and then all of a sudden um, there was a boom in animation. They'd laid off a lot of animators and artists and all of a sudden they were pulling artists off the streets to get into animation. And I was one of the fortunate few who got in in the right time in the 90s. And that's why I've been working in animation so long. But I do a lot of traditional work like this. And this is this is my first advantage to come back to doing what, you know, comic books, unless you're one of the fortunate few, um, don't pay a lot of money. It's really tough to make a living in the comic book industry unless you are one of the star people. And I just, I love comics. I'm a comic book junkie. And I wanted, to, I've been wanting to do my own comic book for a long time. And Silk and Steel is basically a steampunk buddy adventure. And I like to do silly and I like to get in my boys into trouble and lots of cracking. I love cracking. I love tentacles. So um, basically that's what Silk and Steel is all about. It's just a fun, rollick, steampunk adventure. But again, um, when you're doing lines, um, it's like right here, I'm, I'm getting some volume in his sideburns here. And you can see I've done lots of parallel lines here in his beard. And as we've been, I've been building up the hair, it's following lines and just adding them. Let's, let's do some shading on the neck so you can see a little bit of shading. So I'm giving him an Adam's apple, and then he's got you know the the muscles in his neck right here. Now this area under here is going to be shaded, and I'm just going to go diagonal lines straight across, just like that. Um, and behind this part of his hat, that also just gets diagonal lines. Now this is large when you're larger, and I'm still doing diagonal lines. I'm linking these, and again the distance you're hatching or your, these hatch lines are together like um from here to here and here to here and here to here it's an eyeball distance you estimate it and that gives you can tell it's just a very basic you can tell i'm not being very careful and that's just the consistency of the style of this my particular style some people are much more precise some people um, do stippling. And again, I will um, go over that more in another video. This is to, just a kind of, I thought I'd do a short demonstration of basic pen and ink techniques. Um, he's got a vest here. This is the, the part of his vest. And I'm going to tighten up these lines a bit. What I like to do too is once I um, get the whole drawing done, I'll show you. Basically, you can tell... Like these lines are kind of shaky and what have you. So what I'll do is when I'm completely done with the drawing, I like to go over the entire drawing with a heavier outline like that. See how I can, I'm fixing up this line. And what's happened when I do this, what it does, it ends up um, like a cutout. It gives a cutout feeling to the drawing it makes the drawing stand out further and it gives a more finished quality since all these lines are kind of shaky um the the cleaner line that i put around him when it's done and i'm just doing this now so you can just see the difference between the shaky lines and the cleaner lines so i'm going over these lines a second time to make them smoother more even and it gives it a cleaner look just because my lines are kind of shaky. And the thing is, is that that's okay. It's part of your style. I mean, when people talk about developing a style, you have a style. Your style is whatever the way you're drawing right now. My style and your style will change 
over your lifetime. Don't ever worry about creating a style. You have a style. You don't just don't know it. Your style is the personality that comes out in your artwork. So creating a style, you already got one. You've always had a style. You just didn't know. Okay. I miss putting a pupil in his eye, so I'm putting a pupil. And what's nice, too, is that I, when I put this into the computer, um, even if I've missed um, making or fixing mistakes uh, while I've been inking, um, this will be scanned digitally into the computer. Um, I still haven't figured out how I want to do my digital demonstrations. That's why it's everybody's getting the the demonstrations I posted thus far are traditional watercolor and pen and pencil and things like that because I'm still not sure how I want to handle my digital uh, demonstrations. But anyways, um, when I scan this into the computer, if I've made any mistakes that I'm mix fi fixing um, when I get the inking done, I can always, they're even easier to fix into the computer. Um but I like the look of, of pen and ink. I like drawing in pen and ink. And so, and because this is, is a steampunk comic, I thought it would give it a more turn of the century feel um, if I used traditional pen and ink rather than using pen and ink on the computer, because technically you're drawing on glass. Um, I have a Cintiq. I actually use the 12-inch the Cintiq. Um, I just like drawing on it better rather than having the giant Cintiqs and they're also cheaper and you can get one for usually about 300 bucks um, on the internet on eBay. That's where I get all my electronics. Um, but uh, again, I, I think that pen and ink, it's just fun to do. Once you get used to it, um, once you've spilled <laughs> ink all over your work and you fixed it a couple of times and you go, okay, uh, I'm just going to be a mess. And that's the way it is. Cause honestly I do spill ink on my stuff all the friggin' time. Um, the, the real tough one is when you first spill a bottle of ink on your drawing table and you have to clean it up because it is a mess. Um, I get, there's a, a, uh, um, Cleaner from um, Windsor Newton makes this really good acrylic cleaner um, that's for basically cleaning off acrylic paint when it's dried on brushes. And I would highly recommend um, looking it up. I'm sorry, I don't have the name for this stuff. Maybe I'll, I'll put it in the, the link below. Um, but it's great for, you know, if you get ink on anything and it's great for cleaning out ink on brushes. There are a couple of, of, uh, um, you can also look up ink cleaner because they still make cleaner for rapidograph pens. And when rapidograph pens get clogged, you need that stuff. But that's the my quick demonstration today. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, my name is Lynn Hunter. Please subscribe. I Like I said, I try to post um, a, an instructional video of some kind. Try to keep it short uh, at least once a week. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, check out my Patreon site too, if you can. Okay. That's it for now. Bye-bye.